The town of Oak Harbor is located most beautifully on a gentle slope rising from a wide beach of pure white sand. Scattered about over the town site are beautiful oak groves, affording refreshing shade and pleasing to the eye. My name is Laura Renninger. I'm a fourth generation Oak Harborite and I love my town and I love the Gary Oak trees. David Douglas, who was a botanist who toured the Columbia River area after the Lewis and Clark expedition, named the tree that he discovered after his buddy, Nicholas Gary, who was an officer in the Hudson Bay Trading Company. The botanical name is Quercus Garyana, the Gary Oak. Oak Harbor was named for the Gary Oak tree by Dr. Richard Lansdale in 1851. When the first explorers and settlers came here, there were three men that established donation land claims. Smith Park and the majority of Old Town Oak Harbor are from Martin Tafson's donation land claim. It essentially functioned as the village square. So prior to it being named Smith Park, it was called Oak Park Free Camp. According to historic documents, they had band concerts and picnics and socials of many kind. There was a historic event that happened in Smith Park 125 years ago. They listened to speeches and they had musical performances and participated in other traditional 4th of July celebration. So that really marks the beginning of the park being the official gathering place. The land then traded hands and became um, property of the Barrington family. And the Barrington family were prominent pioneers in Oak Harbor. And when Captain Barrington died, his widow, Christina McCrowan Barrington, decided that she needed to sell property to make do but she wanted one special piece of land to remain intact, and that was the Oak Tree Park land. And so eventually the property passed out of her hands to a Mr. Lewis Henry Smith. He signed it over to the city of Oak Harbor, and he wrote on his property deed, in consideration of the community to improve, beautify, and maintain this park as a free public park to be called Smith Park. It's a half an acre and contains about 150 mature Gary Oak trees. So we think that's an exceptional amount of trees in a park. We think it's the only park in Washington State comprised of nothing but Gary Oak trees, so far as we can tell anyway. And Gary Oaks are considered a priority habitat by the state of Washington. One of the neat things that people don't think about Smith Park is that it's essentially a, a nut orchard. The acorns are the fruit of the Gary Oak tree, and the Native American peoples certainly relied on the acorn in their diet. They managed the Gary Oak ecosystems by controlled burns, and so they would have these periodic burns that wouldn't harm the mature trees, but they would burn the underbrush and um, keep all the undesirable underbrush at bay and still allow the trees to thrive. As settlement occurred, the trees were cut down either for firewood or for furniture. You know, the oak is very hard and enduring wood and, and certainly a useful tool. And people didn't really think about the oaks disappearing so much. It was just um, part of that pioneer spirit of, you know, get in and clear things. And so finally in the summer of 1990, the townspeople got really upset. And legend has it that they stormed City Hall and demanded that some kind of law be written to protect Gary Oaks from being randomly cut down just to make way for a new building. And so the original Gary Oak Tree Protection Code was enacted that year. In the Pacific Northwest, we know that up to 95% of Gary Oak ecosystems have been lost. And so what we have left today is just little fragments of these prairie oak remnants. And that's one of the things that makes Smith Park so unique and special. It's considered a priority habitat for Washington State. Legends abound about the post office tree. The land that the tree grew on was part of Mr. Sumner's donation land claim. and the Keister family bought the property and had a farm, and the Keister children played on the tree. That was their jungle gym. Until at some point the land was sold and the U.S. 
post office was built on that location. And at that time also the road was widened and so there was a lot of stress put on the tree. And so over time the tree began to suffer. And some people say it could have lived for much longer if it had been cabled. Several major limbs had fallen and the limbs were extremely heavy. The administration was concerned about human life. It was cut down in 2014, which means that it started its life sometime in the mid 1600s. The decision was made in secret and carried out early on a Sunday morning in March, just when light was breaking. Um, they started the work and so people weren't given a chance to say goodbye to the tree that really meant a lot to people the new name sign the city took the oak milled from the grand old oak at the post office and um, had it engraved and so that's the new name sign it says smith park on the front and then on the back it talks about the provenance of the grand old oak tree those of us that are long-term Oak Harborites had been noticing some trees around town not looking very healthy, and certainly the death of the post office tree shook everyone up. Uh, so we thought about it as a family, and then in 2015, um, got together with a group of other concerned citizens and said, should we become a nonprofit? Is there enough momentum here? You know, How can we help? with replanting Gary Oaks and educating people about the need to protect them and doing outreach and going into the schools and, and that kind of thing. So we got our nonprofit status in 2016 and we've been going ever since then. Oak Harbor Gary Oaks Society every year collects acorns and pots them and then we can take those potted trees to different planting sites. We also have gone into schools and talk to classrooms. That has been very meaningful. Teaching the youth is absolutely critical. We're not just called Oak Harbor for a random reason. We're called Oak Harbor because of the presence of these trees and we have to do everything we can to promote their growth. There's sort of this intangible connection between the trees. We use them as, as landmarks. So, okay, well, you're gonna turn right down that street. It has the tree growing in the middle of the street. You know, we just, we form this bond, whether we think about it deeply or not, about the presence of the trees in Oak Harbor. The Gary Oak mural on the side of the building on Jensen Street and East Pioneer Way is really a culmination of several groups partnering together. The idea was to have the painting reflect a pre-settlement Gary Oak meadow. Not only are we proud of it that it's, it beautifies the side of that building, but we're proud of it because it directs the way to Smith Park in a really magnificent fashion. One of the things we noticed when we take a cross section of Gary Oak Wood is the little star in the center, and that is where the oak starts growing. And then you can see the concentric rings outside of that that represent a year. When I first noticed it was, I thought, wow, that aligns perfectly with my thought the Gary Oak really is the star of our community tree. And so it really does stand out as a star, the star in the center. Mm -hmm.